Good morning and welcome to Broward Teen News. We're here at Cooper City High School to take a look at how our students make our community a great place. Stay tuned to see how our school has changed throughout the years. How our Key Club contributed to a unique event. And a bookshop with some quirks in between the lines. And Broward Teen News starts now. Over the years, our school has seen quite a few renovations. But only few have seen these changes in real time. Let's see how our students and teachers remember the history of Cooper. In 1971, Cooper City High School was born. In honor of this year holding the last class to have memories of the old building, let's see how the school itself has changed. Similar to this, just different faces. You know, A lot of people retired, a lot of new faces here, but pretty similar. It's just different times back then. On the first day of school, I remember there being a blue tarp around the courtyard, and seeing it now, four years later, it's like the hub of the school, and it's really nice. Our school has proved itself to be a place where you can learn and make memories, but it hasn't always looked this way. The old building used to face Sterling Road, and now the new building faces 90th Avenue. The cafeteria is now its own separate building, and the AC is so much better. And some of the old building is still with us, like the media center, the art building, and the gym. They got rid of the old building because it was sinking, and honestly, I think they really should have because this building is so much nicer. Cooper City High School has done a great job of shaping students, staff, and itself. Here's to another 45 years, Cooper. For CTV News, this has been Becca Smitherman. It's no secret that our students here are very hardworking. Between rigorous coursework and part-time jobs, some students really have their work cut out for them. But some of them have more on their plate than others, literally. Casey took a look at how these students are handling their busy schedules. During junior year, there are many things to worry about, from the SAT, the ACT, on top of AP classes. But some of our CCHS students are managing this rigorous work and more. I'm in two AP classes, um, and it's, it's hard, but what you're gonna do, you know? I've been working here since I was 10, and I started getting a permanent job when I was 14. It's a family business. My mom is the co-owner, my aunt is actually the owner of the restaurant, and my dad is the head chef. But the countless hours put forth by these students is not always an inconvenience. I work on the days that I usually don't have school, or days that I come out of school early, or days that I don't have too much work. So I always put my school first, and then I come to work and earn my money. We constantly have music playing, so we're always goofing around, we're always dancing, and it's just a very free-spirited environment. She balances it pretty well. She only comes for a couple hours if she does have to come on the weekend, but school doesn't get deferred. It's always a priority. It is beneficial. It's also showing her how she has to balance out her time, um, that it's not only school and that it's not only work, that you have to try and make both work with whatever hours you're given because you only get 24 a day. By combining hard work with family values, these students show that prosperity is quite possible even in the most weighted situations. A lot of people think that because I work for my parents that it's really, really easy. It's not. But I always make sure to have enough time to balance school and job in my work life. <laughs> for CTV News, I'm Lexi Delgado. Wow, students sure do have a lot to deal with. Yeah, and it really shows their work ethic at school. But there is one major thing that we also have to keep in mind, college. And one event helped us to do just that. Felipe got the story. <laughs> Filled with music, games, and food is a party that is a little bit more educational than audacious that sits on the streets of Las Olas Boulevard. Well, the block party is an event for the Broward community to basically highlight the educational opportunities that are available to them. So they're shopping around, you know, so there's Nova here. There's um, BC, there's FAU, so they're looking for basically the same program, but which can maybe offer better scholarships or more money or like proximity to home. Each of us is trying to showcase that. The Block Party for Education is an event where colleges and magnet programs gather along with families and students to showcase what they have to offer to prospective students. They'll come here to see what program that they want to join, what they can do for their post-secondary education, so they're inquisitive of the programs that they want to partake in. A bunch of elementary school, from there I saw mainly high school and college students around here. 
they love this. It's their time that they are able to show all of their hard work and to be the experts while people come and ask them questions. And they're able to sell our school or their school to respected people who want to join the program. For CTV News, I'm Felipe Lopez. And I'm Danielle Ciso, where the educational party has transitioned to a more formal tone. And build relationships. On Wednesday, network. students all around Broward County met up to learn about different ways they can reach their career goals successfully. So Claim Your Future Showcase is an event, and the idea behind today is that students can come through and walk through all the businesses and what they have to offer. And once they do that, they're able to sit through an executive panel discussion where they can ask high-achieving business sector professionals questions and receive feedback. From business to emergency services to future education, this event provided information on everything a student needs in order to strive in their future. This showcase has been a really good experience for me because it's given me the ability to put myself um, in the position to view my future and to see what I want, what path I want to take in life and what career I want to take and just try to get a glimpse of my future and see what I want to do. This not only um, affects what college I'm going to, but also the, the choices that I'm going to make in the future, in the next few years. So it's really giving me the information and um, insight that I need to make those decisions. With their future in mind, students definitely left the BB&T Center feeling more confident than ever. We'll be right back after these short messages. Help my daughter. No, this can't be happening. Not to her. Not now. Please, somebody help. On Sunday, 11-13, it was World Kindness Day, so we wanted to make a day where we can all dress in pink since that's the kindness color. It's about the little things like holding a door for somebody, saying you look really good today, um, that really matter in somebody's heart. Kindness is an unspoken language that I think we should speak more often. Kindness is found in many places throughout Cooper City. But one foundation is going above and beyond to unite the community through a compassionate program. Let's check it out. On your mark. Walk on. Let's walk. It's no secret that our community is known for its acceptance and kindness. But our CCHS Key Club has taken the reins to help with an important cause. Basically what we do is we help the riders who have disabilities to ride the horses and it's kind of therapeutic for them. Gosh, it's been 27, 28 years um, that got together and we tried to have a program for therapy riding for kids and adults with disabilities and they're still riding. And that's that's what we're all about, having these kids with, uh, whether it's a physical or any other type of handicap, you know, excelling. Not only does Horses for Handicap provide the riders with a fun activity, it also reaps some unexpected benefits. They would um, do something that was therapeutic, like stretch and reach over to grab rings, or there's people who are holding onto them while they're riding to make sure they don't fall off the horses, and then there's someone leading the horse around the ring. Every Saturday, Horses for Handicap is helping people with disabilities ride through their endeavors. Christmas is every Saturday when there's Horses for Handicap there. For CTV News, I'm Casey Chapter. With recent political changes, social media has had a huge impact on younger people's views. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on my timeline lately. Let's see how our students and teachers feel about it. Between candidates posting to Twitter and Facebook and the public forming their own opinions online, social media has played one of the most important roles in this year's election. 
I think that social media has affected the election by influencing people's opinions and people's views on what's going on. Um, that can be like a both positive and negative thing. I think a lot of times people, instead of reading a newspaper or like watching the news and actually getting the information themselves, they have a tendency to just go on social media and just read what, you know, like companies are tweeting or what kids are tweeting and their biased views and they're just following that. So if they see that their friend likes a political party or position, maybe they will like that position as well, especially for the, you know, the younger generation, the millennials. Individuals in general of all ages go on there and say, okay, well, you know, he thinks that Donald Trump is racist. Well, I'm going to think the same thing instead of, you know, doing their own research and forming their own beliefs on what is going on in the election. This is a really big election and I feel like this year a lot of people are getting involved by it. Everywhere on Facebook, everywhere on Twitter, everywhere on Instagram, you see some type of ad. It's getting our generation more to be involved in the election. I know that someone tweeted out like, hey, the debate's going to be tonight. I didn't know that and I actually got to watch the debate because of that. My friends and I, we typically don't talk politics, but because of social media, you get to see the things that they like, you get to see the things, the videos um, that they share. You, uh, you don't realize that your friends have certain positions and sometimes it shocks you. For CTV News, this has been Brianna Franco. The field of journalism is known to be a very friendly and diverse community. And some of our CTVers got to take a look at an event that showcased this perfectly. Here's a story. Good morning! Students all over Broward County are pursuing careers in the field of journalism. National Newspaper Publishers Association, but we are an association of African American or black newspaper publishers. But it isn't every day that an event gives them the insight on their field. As a student, you're given an opportunity today to learn and hopefully be enticed to further research public policy. This is the policy that governs education. So it's very important to students to learn it. From education to activism, the NNPA conference provided students with an informative experience to prepare them for their futures. This group of publications that represent the diversity of this country is extremely important. I learned that diversity in the like in the media and in journalism is probably one of the most important things that you can have. It's incredible to see so many people, not just African Americans here. Everyone is represented in you know their own culture. What I've learned today is that it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, you can always spread positive news and positive information. Journalism students from all over Broward County sure to learn a lot at the National Newspaper Publisher Association. For CTV News, I'm Kara Ben Cosme. For some, sports are just a hobby, but as an athlete, I can tell you it can mean a lot more. And some Cooper students take this to heart as their athletic backgrounds help them to prepare for their futures. Although some may view sports as a mere source of entertainment, these athletics are more than just a game for some of our Cowboys. Softball is a big part of my life. I practice approximately 12 hours a week. I started at the age of four. It's because both of my older sisters played and I grew up around the field and I've continued playing ever since. Well, I started playing volleyball in fourth grade and then I started playing travel in sixth grade and ever since then I've been playing. But what may have started as a hobby has provided a rewarding future for these athletes. I actually just signed to play softball at FAU. I signed with Wilkes University in Pennsylvania on November 9th, and I verbally committed to them last October. Playing high school volleyball, I had to be a setter for this team, and being a setter got me into playing college. So if I wouldn't have been playing as setter, then I probably wouldn't be going to the school that I'm going to. I wasn't as good as everyone else. I was always the one on the bench, and I was always the one that had to wait to have my turn instead of being the one to start on the field. And these past couple of years, I've come to prove myself that I am a starter and I can be the one that is on the field. For CTV Sports, I'm Casey Chapter. Our community has some pretty interesting hidden gems, but it can be hard to find a unique one. But one little bookshop has more than just classics sitting on its shelves. Here's the story. In Cooper City, there's an abundance of places to go if you're looking for a new read. But if you're looking for a book with a story of its own, Second Edition Bookshop can provide a unique experience. People who buy books from us can bring them back when they're done and get store credit for them when they return them, which is about half the time. A lot of people keep their collectors, people who are filling in a collection. I have books in here that are, are 10, 12 years old that they've been coming through the store and I've seen how many times they've been 
bought and rebought and reread. This bookshop is full of stories, but there's one tale that makes it just perfect. Uh, the Great Catsby is 14. He was at a rescue fair and he needed a home and I had space at the bookstore. You're welcome. He, he adds to the bookstore. Our customers really do enjoy visiting with him. A lot of them don't have cats at home. And they do come in to, to see him, to visit with him. He does have his own crowd. This cool cat has not only drawn in the attention of the community, but also receives national acclaim like no other. Recently on Facebook, there was a couple of articles that were written about him from different cat magazines and rescue groups. And then Entertainment Tonight in Taiwan did a story about him. But it was really cute and, and they seemed to really love him. Just like a good book, cats behold a special place in the hearts of men. For CTV News, this has been Isabella Tachi. Here at Cooper, our production program has given lots of students the opportunity to build upon their skills in this field. And more than that, it has offered opportunities to many people, including some very special members of our daily broadcast crew. Let's take a look. Each morning, CCHS students wake up with CTV Today. However, this year, the morning announcements got two special editions. Today. Stay sunny, Cowboys. Alexis and Mikey, both members of Best Buddies, have proved to be valuable on-camera talents. All right, you can see here we have a pretty high surf moving down the way right here, but there's a little bit of cloud coverage. You can see there's a tiny bit of precipitation in the back there. As the weather girl, Alexis gives the school updates on rainfall patterns and winds. When I heard that there was going to be a weather segment on CTV today, I was literally, like, overjoyed. Mr. Pichardo was so impressed. He made me the permanent weather girl, and I was so honored. I mean, it was my dream. And, and Mikey delivers the coop important sports scores. I like doing sports every day in TV, too. I like doing the basketball, the baseball, the football. Both Alexis and Mikey love their jobs, and it's clear to see in their work. Well, favorite part working with Alexis is I help her do the segment. Together, they clearly form an impressive duo. For CTV News, I'm Mark Brent. Wow, Cooper really does have exceptional programs to offer our students. But some of them have more to offer than what meets the eye. Our creative programs give students a chance to show off their abilities while strutting down the runway. Cooper City High is home to a very special group of students. Not bad for a first time. But many may not be familiar with the unprecedented project that they've been working on. Just so that they're nice and neat. And Cooper Crafts is a business that provides innovative craft projects for students, while also helping to spread the cheer that comes with the holiday season. Although they are celebrating the winter delight through their crafts now, Cooper Crafts are available for customers year-round, showing their commitment to their art. For CTV News, I'm Casey Chapter. Everyone has their own interests, and it really shows throughout Cooper City. There truly is a place for everyone. Next, we get to take a look at how one business makes every visit enjoyable. With just a small drive north, you may come across a hidden gem, which seems like an ordinary comic book store. But once you walk in, it's a whole new world. Tate's Comics is a pop culture mecca. Even if you don't think you're into it, if you come here, there'll be something you find that you are into. We've got things that are from your childhood, things you don't know you like yet, things that you didn't even know existed. We are going to have it. We don't just do comics or just do anime. We've got comic books, we've got anime, we've got vinyl, snacks, gallery. As well as the items sold here, Tate's Comics also has a crew of employees that contribute to the uniqueness of the store. The best part about that is we're all into it. So if we carry it here, that means there's some employee that's into it that you can talk to about it. So it's not going to be, hey, can you talk to me about this, this, this collectible vinyl? No, I don't know about it. Like, oh, yeah, and here's why we have it. So our uniqueness comes from the variety of stuff and the fact that everybody can talk to you about the stuff here. So it makes it a pretty cool place. As one of the most influential comic stores in the nation, it's safe to say that Tate's Comics has become and continues to be a huge success. For CTV News, I'm Ashton Bosse. Thanks for tuning in to this Cooper City edition of BTN. I'm Ashton. And I'm Emily. Be sure to visit Broward Teen News online for more episodes. Have a great week.